that would just go shoving and then foot sweep and then just clip them. Yeah, but we're not talking about trained fighters. We're talking about drunk goons in a bar. And we'd go out there and <laughs> grab the guy and we'll buy that and pick him up. We walk him out. It is so fun. All right, guys, surprise foot sweep for the streets. For the streets. It's like a poem. All right, I do have an Oshawa's instructional. It's going to be linked down below. Uh, but this is a really, really good one that I used to use when I would, I don't want to say bouncer, but I guess I was a bouncer, right? When I used to work uh, the bars when I was in my early 20s, you know, I would get zero respect because first of all, I'm short, right? And second of all, oh, I'm shorter than me. A lot shorter than you, yeah. You're what, 6'5"? 5'13". <laughs> right? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I get no respect, you know? So sometimes I'll be like, all right, guy, you got to go. And they would almost 90% of the time say, make me. Yeah. And then you get fired up. I'll get fired up, yeah. <laughs> From those days, one of the best foot sweeps that used to work, the guy would say, make me, and get in my face. I'm like, whoa, whoa, all right, you're going to have to go here. And usually, they leave with their left leg because most people are right-handed, okay? In this case, I would just go shoving and then foot sweep and then just clip them. And most of the time, they would just fall over, given that they were also drunk. Right, that definitely helps. But this is a really nice, useful deashi uh, that's sort of like, you know, hey, hey, dude, right? And if you get in the stance, people get a little bit defensive, but it's like chest to chest or something like, yo, you want to go? This kind of a stance, right, where you're kind of thinking about where your hip is relative to your opponent, lead leg, wish leg, dominant hand. So most likely he's not going to throw a hook or an uppercut unless he's a trained fighter. Okay, but we're not talking about trained fighters. We're talking about drunk goons in a bar, right? And then when you crowd him here, where the weight shifts off that front leg, you just clip it, bang. Sometimes you bring it across, sometimes you akriyash vari it, and then link it, bang, right into his back and take out his feet. Which is actually pretty dangerous because it can hit their head, right? So as you do this kind of a thing, what I used to do was clip it and then catch the head. So as he's falling, I could cradle his head down to the floor, right? And if that didn't work, usually it's just a regular, right? Because it's chest to chest, it would be like a osoto kind of a thing here. And I make sure that he can't free his head. And then when I throw him and take him down, look, I cradle his head and then I go right here, right? And then it's like, you, you wanna, right? And you give him a little bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe a useful foot sweep for you in, out in the wor real world, like potentially, you know? I'm a big fan if you're doing judo to like, cause people do come like this. And when they do that, you just wanna close the distance and then kind of buy it. That's why I think Greco-Roman's a very useful grappling art when you're talking about dealing with people with no experience, you know? And that foot sweep, very helpful. But disclaimer, if the person hits the head and gets injured, you know, don't, don't blame me. Yeah, avoid it if you can. Yeah, don't, don't do any of this stuff in the streets. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I used to work out with this guy, Victor John Baptiste. He was a, a six-time Haitian national judo champion, and he was built exactly like me, right? So me and him would be there, and we would just start picking guys up, throwing them, shoving them out of the bar. It was awesome. And ironically, and I'm like telling the story, this guy Ron, he was like this 350 pound black dude, right? He was obese. This guy had such poor eyesight, he had these like thick eyeglasses, you couldn't see down the bar. Mm -hmm. And he was diabetic, and he could barely stand it. He would sit the whole time just like catching his breath all night. And then something would happen and he would get up, and by the time he got to the end of the bar, he was like wheezing. You could literally push him over and he'd fall over, mm -hmm. right? But people were scared of this guy. He would be like, Get out! And then the guys would be like, oh. And then they would run. He was one of the bouncers too? Or he was one of the bouncers. Okay. It was like me, yeah. this guy Ron, and Victor. Yeah. And then sometimes people would be fighting and Ron would get up and be like, get out! And sometimes they won't do anything and Ron would be like, Victor, Shintaro, come back here! And then we'd go out there and like, <laughs> grab the guy and we'll buy that and pick him up. We'd walk him out. It was so fun. I remember one time Victor, right? He like, the guy like took a swing. And he just like ducked it, came here, right? Lifted him, right? Ran him out the door, and I had the guy in the body lock, so I'm like running behind him with this dude, Victor running with him, take Ruma, and like walked him out, and he goes, Shin, check this out! And then slammed this guy to the floor. And it was just so funny, like how that was, and we got zero respect, but Ron, he'd get up from this chair like this. Anyway, 